This is Andy Perot for I Was, and I'm delighted to be joined by James Morrison. It's a little weird saying this next part now. A former professional footballer for West Bromwich Albion, because I'm a West Bromwich Albion fan, as a lot of people will know. A weird feeling knowing you're not a pro footballer yourself. Now, James, I know we're here tonight to talk about your past career, but just to touch on that, what's it been like, your initial months being retired from the game? Um, no one no one really prepares you uh, when uh, the retirement hits you. Um, it's a strange feeling. Um, you always ask yourself, uh, what's next? What are you going to do? Um, and that's what you've got to deal with for the, the first few months. What You've got to find what you want to do next. Um, um, I'm lucky enough to the club uh, inviting me in to, to do coaching and I'm trying to find if I enjoy it and, and, and something that I want to pursue um, and if I don't like that and then I'm back to uh, what I want to do next and uh, that's the big situation nothing comes comes easy to uh, to playing um, and when you're playing you, you just ride along in a bubble um, and probably it's the greatest job of going I saw Nigel Quasi yesterday and I was speaking to Nigel about what he's doing away from the game now. He's obviously got his own academy set up, he's got a trampoline park, etc. How difficult is it to try and find the time to fill what the professional game did for you? you know, you're training nine, nine to whenever every day, two, maybe a session in the gym, and then you've got your match days. You know, it's that routine from the age of eight or nine when you're in the academy up until the time of your retirement. How difficult is it to find the the right things to occupy that and fill that gap it's, it, it is very difficult um, and no one or someone can prepare you for it um, I wish that I wish there was someone out there to, to help you that um, I know Nigel I've seen him out and about and he's done very well in setting up uh, successful businesses um, but I'm a big believer and you've got to do something that you really enjoy and um, you might you might take you uh, a couple of months, might take you a year, but um, I believe that you'll always find something that you're enjoying, uh, and that's what you've got to do. You mentioned you've obviously gone down a bit of a coaching route for now. You're working with the club. How have you found that? How have you found the initial tran transition from player to coach? Yeah. Uh, it's been difficult. Um, you don't realise what what goes into coaching and and what you have to do. Um, so the transition's been difficult, but um, it's one I'm going to stick out and, and, and see where it leads me. You've obviously worked with a number of managers at the club and with Middlesbrough over the years, and with Scotland. Has becoming a coach now maybe given you a, a greater insight and maybe a little bit more respect towards what previous managers were trying to get across, which maybe in your playing days you thought we yeah. could do something different and whatever? Yeah, so obviously... Um, Looking back now on a, a coach's point of view, I might have been a problem. <laughs> um, so, again, it, it, I've got huge respect for the coaches that I've uh, worked under. Um, didn't realise at the time what, what goes into it. Um, and probably now I apologise for it if I, I ever, ever um, didn't perform or didn't do a session. Um, so I'm just trying to get my head around it now. I mean, away from the football side and away from coaching, what are you up to in your downtime? Have you got much downtime on your hands now that you've retired? Yeah, so obviously I spend a lot of time with my family, um, socialising with friends, um, playing a bit of golf. Um, but now the the weather is not so good. You know, it's hard to to find you what you get into. Um, I haven't been going to the gym. Uh, I haven't found the motivation. But um, January. I've set myself a target to to get back in there. So, you join the rest yeah, of us. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've joined the rest of us. So um, if you want to join me, you can join me. <laughs> How nice is it as well, though, to to know this is your first Christmas where you can spend it more with your family and with your friends, whereas previously I know that there's been days when you've had to, you've had to train on Christmas Day. Like, yeah. how nice is it to be able to just down yeah. tools and reflect? Yeah. So it's um, so it's one of the the highlights of, of being retired really that I can I can join me Christmas um, you know I booked a holiday to go to go away after Christmas and, and spend New Year away with my family and uh, I'm really looking forward to that bit of sun uh, over Christmas uh, recharge the batteries and then um, 
try and pursue uh, the next year what I really want to do. I know you'll be as frustrated as what many Albion fans were with regards to the last four or five years. You just had those little niggles and which reoccurred for whatever reason, just constantly coming up. Is that kind of you can't say regret because injuries are injuries, but is that just something which kind of leaves a bit of taste in your mouth that you couldn't leave things on your terms? Yeah, it, it's a massive regret. Um, some of that I think about every day. Um, what could have been really? Obviously, I played 300 and odd games for Albion, but realistically, it should have been 400 and odd. Um, I know injuries are part and parcel, but some of my injuries could have been uh, dealt better with. Um, so that's where I've, I've got to deal with and um, try and overcome. Um, so, but, yeah, and that's where I'm at. You mentioned during the Q and A, you had a message from Jimmy Shaney who was trying to tempt you to see if you'd be interested just to work with him at Kiddy Minster, maybe as a player coach role. Is that something you you are genuinely considering now? The difference being now, when you have had your time off, you've been able to just completely forget about football. Whereas, say, if he was injured, you're focusing on the return, you're having re the rehabilitation period. Is it something this time round? You are now having this time off, you're considering a bit more. You are looking to. There's a possibility you we might not have seen the last of you. Um, yeah, there's a possibility. Um, but literally, uh, um, I have literally done nothing for three or four months. So um, so I'm out, really out of shape. So I'm going to have to take a, a few months to get back in shape and then and then try and uh, and then try and think about it. Um, but yeah, I'm really considering it. Yeah. For what I know, because uh, retirement as a footballer is, is not easy. Obviously, being in amongst the lads at this moment in time, what are your thoughts on on them and the season and the way that everything's been going? I think it's been um, picture perfect, really. Um, I don't think it can go any better. Um, you know, that sitting uh, pretty at the top with uh, 11 points gap is a uh, fantastic season. Um, it's a credit to the lads, to the manager, and the club, and um, that's the only way is forward. Obviously, there's that, that big gap, as you've mentioned. How difficult will it be just to mentally stay switched on and ensure that they don't find themselves drifting off at any point? Um, I don't see any complacency getting into the in the team uh, in the situation um, throughout the out the time now. Um, so I don't. I can't. I, I literally cannot see it. Um, they've got some great players, um, and hopefully they stay. Uh, throughout the throughout the January window. Talking about some of those players, you know, Matthias Pereira and Grady Dian Garner in particular have impressed Grady obviously on loan from West Ham. But Matthias, you mentioned up on the stage, Gareth Barry said he's as good a player as he's ever played with. Yeah. Gareth being at Man City and Everton, yeah. that's quite some recognition and yeah. plaudits. Yeah, it is, and uh, I'll say it again. Uh, I can't believe West Brom have got him, and it sh just shows um, what depth the, the recruitment team have done. Um, and Dean Garner at West Ham and hopefully we can keep hold of him uh, Romain Sawyers coming from uh, Brentford for 3 million is a good buy uh, semi uh, centre half is um, a great buy and then obviously Cal Bartley being a tremend tremendous season I mean everyone's chipping in uh, you can name throughout the team that they've all done the jobs and um, now they've just got to believe that they're going to do it uh, for the rest of the season it's been mentioned as the season's gone on, people have made the comparisons between this team and Tony Mowbray's team that you was a part of that one promotion. Can you see those similarities? Do you, which team do you feel was, was actually stronger on paper? I know you was in the one, but if you were to look at it and why things are going, how do you, how do you see it? <laughs> That's a difficult question. Um, and I'm being biased of being biased. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to say our team now, but um, you can see similarities. Um, uh, let, let's just go back to how the game's changed um, and price tags yeah. for what the, the the club has spent uh, this year. Um, I think uh, this year this this year's teams um, is probably ahead of us. Um, and obviously, I go back to it, if you're going to go compare both teams, what would it be like if the both went up? I think uh, this team here would be more capable in the Premier League. One thing I do want to touch on before I let you shoot off, because I know we're effectively probably being kicked out in a second. 
you talked about the derby games and you know, against Wolves and Villa in particular. Me being a West Brom fan, never never nice to lose a derby game. I'll go in the salt for a few weeks. But what's it like as a player? You know, you, when when we hear the stories you've got up there, we see more of a passionate side. We see things which maybe you would discuss in a tone we wouldn't see after a game. I don't know if maybe that's the restrictions on what you're allowed to say or media yeah. restrictions, etc. But what's it like for you guys in the camp after a game in a derby hasn't gone the way that we'd like? Um, yeah, it affects you for like, uh, say if we're playing Saturday, Saturday in the Premier League, it affects you for you know a good five days or sometimes it affects you for a few weeks. Um, the build-up in it, you see what it means for... Um, for the fans, and if you're in there in the in the club for a long time, you you see you get you you get in building that, um, and and it can affect you. Um, but it, it's up to the person, you know, to try and if you do lose, try and put that right, and if you win, it's trying to you know keep that winning feeling. Um, and and the derby games are the ones that you wanna you wanna play. In. Um, they're, your, they're your, your pinnacle of your careers and, and sometimes that can make you a legend in a club if you, you do perform Just before I let you shoot off what is your greatest memory in a West Point Albion shirt? Well, the, 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 there's, been a, there's been a couple um, you know getting promoted uh, the first season I came winning the league uh, there's 5-5 five five at um, Man United Sir Alex Ferguson's last game uh, there's been Wolves 5-1 away. Um, there's been a lot of games um, and I've had a tremendous career and, uh, and you know, I, I thank, I'm thankful for being involved in it. Finally, oh, sorry, what is your biggest regret with West Bromwich Albion? Oh, regret, you put me on the spot there, aren't you? Um, my regret. Um, regret that I live with is probably... Um, amount of injuries that I had um, and what could have been really I think if I didn't get injured I, I would still be playing today and my last question to wrap this up what, I, I always like to ask people this to see what stories I'd have have you got any funny or weird stories with regards to where you've been recognised in public and asked for a photo or an autograph so I'll give you an example I interviewed Troy Deeney and Troy said that he was in the disabled he was in the toilets and he was changing his daughter's nappy come out and some fans were starting to ask him for a photo and he had a diaper in one hand and he was trying to shake the hands and take a photo of the other yeah well that's that's probably similar like um when you're a, you're in a, a club and that and you have a you have a, you go to the toilet and then someone has to shake your hand and <laughs> it's just stuff like that um but no it's it's always um nice to be acknowledged you know even today i was doing my christmas shopping and I was stopped a few times to uh, speak to fans um, and it's always nice and that you showed that um, you still cared about. Because I've just been reminded, you mentioned that you, you've done a bit of boxing training during your your football career, working with Richard Woodall, former world champion. Yeah. How did you find that? How did you find the difference between football and boxing training? Yeah, I always thought it was um, a good release um, and a, some, something different and obviously it was a very, very hard uh, training um, and Richie was a great coach and, and he knew knew what he uh, wanted to get out of you and, and that was uh, being on the floor when you, you finished um, yeah so I, I always used to like to uh, throw on the pads and, and have a go um, and even when I was injured uh, to get to the CV in, in my system I, I'd like to do boxing because you know if you're out for a long time it was somewhat different that uh, always got you through. Uh, being stuck on a bike was always hard, but you know the box and you could get release from and a bit of frustration out. Did that come in handy, Sido? No comment. <laughs> well, James, you will leave there because now you've got to shoot off. I appreciate your time. Thank you for speaking to me, and best of luck with whatever the future yeah. holds. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, James.